I started uh, when I was young, as a, taking figure lessons and singles lessons. Then I stopped after four years and worked on my music more because I had to spend more time with that. And also that ring closed in Austin, Texas at that point. And then I took it back up in college for PE credit. I said, this will be an easy A. And, and then I found a pair partner. We competed for about four or five years. She moved to Washington. Her father, like I said, was finishing out his career at the Pentagon. And we competed, like I said, for about four more years. And that was my involvement in that, and that was pair skating. Then I, somebody handed me a clipboard one day, a judge, and said, you're trialing. And then it worked out. I just kept trialing one level to another level. And I, 10 years later, I was a national judge. And also, they thought that the ISU was gonna change the age bracket to 40 when you had to get your first initial appointment. So I got my national appointment and my international appointment at the same time. And then from there, history. I got my world appointment in 1996, took the world exam. And I judged the Olympics in 2002. Two worlds, Nice and um, Vancouver. Ladies in Vancouver and the pairs in Nice. And a couple of junior worlds. So, Europeans. And now I'm involved in the new system in more of the education part, in the components. Well, the biggest difference for me is the fact that it's not just an impression. Taking what I like or what I don't like based upon what you're supposed to be looking at technically what you were supposed to be looking at in the criteria, well, the components, but they weren't called components, the presentation mark, there were seven criteria for that. But they were never really defined, like we've taken and defined each criteria, each criteria out and each component out. But I think when you have to just do things on impression, you know, like why I like this, or if I want to give a, a bad mark, not a bad mark, but a mark that you know, that fits what I think the skating is. That was the problem for me. And I always thought it was an issue. As a matter of fact, when I first started trolling, I raised my hand in a meeting and said, could you explain to me why we only give two marks for everything that we're trying to evaluate? I said, don't you throw some stuff out and keep some stuff, some ideas to get your mark? Although, I'll just sit down and be quiet. <laughs> So, but that's generally what I like. The reason I, I went to this system and changed my attitude about it was that the judge isn't important anymore. Before the judge was very important and the press seemed to, to hone in on the, on the judge. You know, what this judge put this place there for, Michelle Kwan won because of this or lost because of this, this judge. And it might not have been that at all, but it was about placing in the other system. This system is about a standard and marking according to a standard, and hopefully that will all get better as time goes on. Just, it was 100 years in 6 so we've only done, what, four years in this system, so, and I think it's already better. Because when you evaluate details, details equal the end result. A lot of judges have not, they, they feel like they're not getting the overall picture. But I always feel like if I do all the details, I get an overall picture. I have no idea where I place the skater because that's not what's important. The important thing is you're all coming up with your marks to be a team to equal the placement via points. No, I mean, I think, you know, if you understand what the errors are, and when you look at an element, what the quality of that element is, and then you reduce according to the errors. Um, it's just, it, that's always been, we've always done that, but we never put a point value to it, and we never gave any uh, quality value succinctly, where you say, this is worth a plus two, this is worth that. It was all arbitrary, especially cheetah jumps. Cheetah jumps, if it was a good skater, 
and other people were medium mediocre in their skating. The cheetah jumper probably ended up pretty much on top because of the quality of skating. And that's hard to balance. Now it truly really balances way out. You can't mess around with it. If there, it's more than a quarter of a cheat, it's downgraded, which is fair because the rotation's a problem and the landing's a problem. Well, I mean, basic the the federations that could make that decision. They, you can make proposals, and if the federations vote for it, then they could eliminate it. You know, because that's a federation decision of every country: Russia, America, Australia, Thailand. You know, whatever. If they vote for to get rid of something, they can do it. For me, in my experience in this sport. I don't think it makes any difference. It, in the 6-0 system, it made a difference because the judge was, their, their decision could make or break that placement, that end result with the majority and the simple majority and all this stuff that I never quite understood because I never got into the accounting part. But I think it, um, if it, it, in this system, it's not important because it's a collective amount. It's the trim mean. One high, one low, one judge, not drawn at random. As a matter of fact, we talked in our roundtable discussion today that why not make a proposal and say, still a high and a low throw down, but count every judge and don't draw a random. Do a medium, the medium average, the median. In other words, the person that's in the right in the middle gets thrown out too. So you do a high, low, and the person right in the middle, because judges are having a tendency right now, because of the corridor, uh, that system of the corridor evaluation, of uh, being afraid and they pull in a little bit. The first year, everybody was random, because there was no corridor, and there's nothing wrong with the corridor. You have to have some evaluation system for your judges. But right now, it's pretty mathematical. But now they put the OAC in, the Official Assessment Commission, which they judge at the same time, and they look at what the judges have done and look for patterns of over-marking, under-marking, or sticking, you know, in the GOE and in the um, components also. So for me, I, it's not a big deal. There's a lot of pressure on judges from countries, and this system, they, they don't, even if you saw it, uh, there would still be pressure, I mean, for a judge. And it's just a fact of life, whether we like it or not, it's just the way life is. Pressure is given when people want awards or rewards. So, like a placement and maybe it does involve money, I don't know. But for me, it's not a big deal for me. Well, I mean, but the point I made already was that judge is not as important. They're a collective group making a decision in this system. And if you think somebody's overmarking, then that will be, the OAC will look at that. And there can be any processes with that. I mean, there's a process if you're out of the corridor or if, if you're too high, they can look at it and make comments and send letters to judges saying, you need to look at your marks, etc. Now, if you're out of the corridor, it's an, automatically, it's an automatic assessment. So they're gonna change some of that too, I'm sure. But I have no problem with the anonymity of, of judges and wanna say because of pressure, that's fine. You know, but a lot of people believe it should be totally open, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not going to mean much to most. I mean, the 6 0 system, boy, you say, hmm, you know, what was that judge doing? You know, now you look at it, you have all these numbers, and you have to sit and analyze it and try to figure out what the judge was doing. So. Mm -hmm. A quarter is a system evaluation. You have in the GOE the, the, uh, in the, the, the plus threes to the minus threes with zero being base value, what you give for an element, you know, depending on how good it is, and then you can reduce according 
two errors and there are four there are phases to most everything in other words what you have to do like in the uh, preparation phase the takeoff phase the rotation phase the landing phase and all elements jumps and spins are based upon those phases that's how you come up with a real objective decision about what you're going to get that element okay the corridor if you're more than um, say it's 13 elements if you're 14, if you're 14 points out, then you're an anomaly for being out of the corridor. So they look at that. You could be too low and be out of the corridor too, pluses or minuses depending. In the same thing in the, um, there's a mathematical process also in the components. I'm not sure how that works, but I know you have 1.5 on every component to be high or low. Okay, adding up to, I think, I think it comes out to 7.5 total with the five components. So you can be out of that range. Within that range, you're within the corridor. But then they still look also at the other facts, like this judge really made an error on this element. It has to be a minus three. And so they made an error here. But one error doesn't kill you. I mean, it's humanism. Sometimes you've got you've to look at it. It's human beings doing this, not a laser beam. So, and that's basically what the quarter is. It's a system of evaluation. It's pretty mathematical right now. Like I told you, if you're out 7.5, then you're out of the quarter. Okay, meaning if you went to 8.5, or if you're 0 0.50 more, then you're out. However, there is a process that I can send a letter. If I think I'm gonna be out of the corridor, the process, and I may get an assessment, I can send a letter to the ISU explaining my why I gave in the criteria, say I'm out in the corridor for the components. I send that letter explaining every, for me, all the details of the criteria, and then they pass it on to the technical committee. Because once the OAC, the Official Assessment Commission, looks at and they pinpoint an anomaly, somebody that's out, and they say, yes, this should be looked at. It goes to the technical committee, the technical committee reviews it, maybe looks at tapes, or DVDs or, or whatever, film of the performance and they'll agree or not agree. And if they, if they go against the OAC, then the OAC, they have to collectively come up with a decision and then if they can't, then it goes to the council to make the final decision, as I understand it. Okay, components are the art part. You, the first two skating skills and transitions were put in also as a part of the technical part too, but they put it in the components to balance out. You get a certain percentage for the technical and you get of, of what counts and a certain percentage for the, it's supposed to be 50-50, it's not quite that, I understand. It's supposed to be a little more in the technical, but very slightly. That's why we go from one to 10 in the components, because you need those marks to balance out what you can get technically with all the points. So they really figured out this pretty well mathematically so that you can't um, overdo. You know, one, one part's not worth more than something else, okay? Uh, of course, if you wanted to manipulate something, you could throw out huge high marks in the components, but nobody's really doing that. Now, they may be a little, but they're not really jacking up the marks to a nine and everybody else is in a seven. Maybe a few judges, but they'll be assessed if they're doing that. Skating skills transitions. Transition, well, you know what skating skills are. It's the foundation for everything. Without good skating skills, it's hard to have art work, okay? And number, number two, the transitions make an element more difficult to do. Plus, they give interest. The word unity in composition of the program is the threading of all the parts. That's where transitions come in in the components. Then you have performance execution. Okay, that's the way the criteria there for such as projection, your physical, emotional, and intellectual involvement in the program, how that comes across doesn't mean you're interpreting the music. It means that you're understanding and showing in an execution fashion with your body movements what your criteria is saying. Okay, and there are six or seven in that right now. I can't remember all of them. 
but uh, you projection's a big one. Variety and contrast ideas like you if you do and that's the whole thing like if, if the, like they're probably going to come up with something so you can't do five billments in a program because that's not variety and as a judge for me if i see five billments that's an issue with variety okay so that's a part of performance execution is the performance is what the criteria is the execution is how you do that criteria so performance so you could do the criteria, I mean, you could present the criteria, but you may not execute it very well. Misses, like the men in this particular competition, uh, their long programs weren't up to the high standard that the shorts were in the execution part. Some of them did still give a performance, but not the execution, so you make your decision of how much you're going to balance that out and come down. Um, then you have um, choreography composition, that's strict. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Unity, the threading of all the parts, uh, phrasing and form, how all the ideas are matched to the music and the structure of the music. And then interpretation is strictly how you manipulate the music with your body and your movements, the nuances of the music, the subtle ideas, uh, the obvious ideas, like big crescendo coming up, as, are they just stroking? Are they doing something that takes you into this peak in the music? And that's what interpretation is. Now, I keep telling the skaters or in the seminars, I said, you're using recorded music, number one. You're not performing the music. Therefore, you're interpreting the interpreter because they're interpreting the music. So you have to interpret what their decision is. And what I did in the last seminar to try to show people what interpretation is, I took one Chopin Nocturne, the E minor, and three different great artists. And number one, the tempos told you one aspect, the differences right away, because they were also different. One was a minute and a half less in the performance of it. And that tells you how fast the tempo was. Okay, so um, the issue was how they took the same music on a page or text edition, which means that it's not, uh, it's exactly a facsimile of what the composer wrote. No editing by anyone. And how they interpret that. And it's amazing. And they got it. They understood that interpretation truly is how you manipulate the ideas of the music, you yourself. So a skater's job is to take the movement and show how they manipulate. Their easy movement and flow to the music is all also, and the obvious one is the character of the music. Do they understand the tempo changes? Do their bodies work with it? Do their feet work with it? You know, it's got to make sense with those changes. If not, there's an issue there. And all the components deal with, and this has been the hard concept, percentage of achievement. How much have you achieved? In other words, if you give a four, you're saying that averaged out 40% of the time that skater achieved what's in the criteria. Balanced out, not each one in the fours. You might have one in a six, one in a three, one in a five, whatever, but it balances out to your final mark. That's what's supposed to happen. That's and that's great. the components. You can tell I was in, <laughs> involved in this pretty detailed one. And Laurie Nickel and another guy, also Mika, um, I'm not for sure how to pronounce his last, Sarah Nalen, I get, you'd kill me for not saying it right. But he's Finnish and he was with the Finnish Ballet, National Ballet Company for 13 years. So he was involved in that aspect. Laurie was and Nickel was involved in the choreography aspect. And then I was involved in the musical aspect when we do the seminars. And of course, all of it relates to skating. So ISU gave us the, the uh, component names, skating skills, you know, etc. We've actually expanded the performance execution and then also choreography composition because choreography, the word itself means the act of creation, the scene or an idea, but we're really judging the composition of the program and the, the skater doing that composition of the program. So, um, but it was interesting, that process
was a very involved process because it started out the ISU, like I told you yesterday, said, uh, called Charlie Sear and I and said, from the US, and said, we would like for you to, in two days to finish, to give us a criteria. And we said, well, we can't do it in two days, give us four days. And we did what I said, and Charlie also said, it's not good enough. So then the next year I said, we will work on this and I'll get people involved in the, from the arts in it, uh, to do it like American Ballet Theater, or ABT, uh, New York City Ballet, um, and some friends of mine that are opera coaches and uh, other musicians. And just to look at what they see in performance, what they see in how you would evaluate the composition of a program if you're doing choreography like in dance. And so they took what we did, and Laurie and I did about 30 drafts to get what we thought would work. And she was great. She has really excellent knowledge. And so the hardest thing has been in the judging ranks to get us all on the same page of what the criteria is all about, how to use it and apply it. The seminars, because it was such a drastic change with so much more information that uh, David Doerr was very instrumental in this, uh, uh, getting the seminars out for us to understand what the components are. If you, for example, to spread your marks, if you see someone not doing transitions and you see that they're weak, it's just upper body. It's not any difficult, there is not any difficulty or intricacy in it. And therefore, if there's not intricacy and difficulty, how do you rate quality? That's part of it. So what we did is we presented through a process of looking at previous skaters, uh, current skaters before this group of Olympians. So we really didn't have, except for junior skaters from last year, uh, skaters under the system to show the evaluation process. So it was a little hard because we took some former skaters that were world champions, Olympic champions, and showed, for example, how the first third of some of their programs were nothing but jump setups for more than like four, it's about 48 seconds for one skater, who I'm not going to say, because I think if they would have had to have done this, they would have done it. But we not, never marked how you link elements. So it was all about a technical thing, of getting that jump off that quad and that triple axle, for example. Now it's expected that you link it. And if you don't see it, you're not supposed to be giving a high mark. If one third of the program is an issue, with how you link your elements in the composition of a program, for example, and also in transitions. Of course, that's only in unity in the composition of the program. You have six, six other criteria to work with. But in transitions by themselves, all that blank space, you have to look how much is blank. It's not really so much in time. You're supposed to work with the music, with your transitions, the phrasing of the ideas. So um, it's, it's been difficult, a difficult process, but we've had four big seminars now. And in our country, in the US, we did three seminars just for our national judges to prepare for this uh, coming up uh, nationals and also our Easterns, our sectional championships were just done under the new system. So, and it's just a, a process of doing, practicing, and getting used to the new format. It's basically just reformatting. Okay, basically it was electric. And it's like I said yesterday, when I got home and reviewed it on VCR, it was, it depends on how you want to evaluate something in 6.0. I mean, how your impression was of something and what you grab onto to find those two marks. And it's, there were night and day, the performances, the choreography, the ideas. So to me that night, it was the Canadians, but that was just me as a watcher, not an evaluator sitting on the stands. And it, that whole concept changes when you sit on that stand. 
because you're just like that. And in the new system, it's totally that because you're giving a mark for everything and then you're concentrating and marking transitions, marking shapes of ideas, how they get here, this movement, that movement. I mean, you're, you know, you're trying to show why you're gonna get that mark for, for those components. But in Salt Lake, it was the difference of, like I told you yesterday, uh, the Bolshoi Ballet to the Kirov Ballet, American Ballet Theater to New York City Ballet. One has a certain style, the way they do something. Bolshoi to me is this big movements, you know, and then you come down, you work back up to a big movement. And the Kirov is linked. Everything is linked very subtly and ideas and depends on how you want to look at it. That is your impression and that's your artistic license of choosing if you can base it on a foundation of understanding what is in art. What's, what, what is the point of this? Does it make sense and does it fit an evaluation process according to a criteria? So that night, it the electricity was the Canadians for me, but the, uh, the, the, the Russians were fabulous too. Their skating skills are just amazing. The power that they get across the ice. So, you know, it was everybody, I shouldn't say this, it was, it, they, it was a scandal from the, the fact that the French judge said she was coerced into making a decision for the Russians. And, but when you look at it, maybe there are some legitimate reasons why people had the, the, the Russians first, you know. When I looked at it on tape, it wasn't so clear. It was clear to me, I would have probably have had the presentation marked a little higher. And the one error that the Russians have, and maybe, the landing of the two throws weren't quite, if you wanted to compare, and that's what that system was about, taking that throw, comparing it to that person, this and that, so you're comparing all the elements. And so maybe that would have made a difference. It would have been interesting in the new system to see, you know, with lifts, everything getting a uh, value, et cetera, how it would have worked out. Of course, the, the what's required isn't the same. So you really couldn't do that. And you couldn't do it in the ladies' event either. I mean, like with the spirals. I mean, sometimes you couldn't even tell if there was a spiral sequence in some of the ladies. One spiral and they're done. So, um, I, I really can't say who, I favored the Canadians because of the linking process, but the Russians were fabulous. It was great skating that night by both of them. Actually, there were other teams that were really quite exciting too. It was a very good event. Well, I mean, everybody says they should be thrown out and that's that, but you know, even in our own society, you don't throw somebody in prison until they have a due process. So it has to go through a process and you just don't throw somebody out. So you have to figure out, and even if you're in prison, you get out like in four years, they make deals. So everything in life has these deal processes that ends this caveat to that, to this, to get whatever. My feeling is, of course, I, I, I don't understand why people just can't judge, but maybe these pressures that they get in other countries for whatever reason, financially, I don't, maybe nationalistic, I don't know. I mean, we all have a sense of nationalism. You want your skaters to do well because you feel, ha, oh, yes, the Olympics, you know, or the World Championships or something. It's a natural feeling. But corruption to me is, it's unacceptable, but then you have to prove it. It's easy to say they're corrupt by looking at it, but unless if the French judge had not come out and said anything, what would we be saying? Oh, here's another time where opinions, you know, well, we could fight all our lifetime about who should have won. It's the same thing with the year with Linda Fradiani and, uh, you know, that decision. Uh, and who was the other? Annette, uh, Annette, yeah, that decision. You know, was there corruption there? Well, I don't know. It was never proven if there was. And it was the decision that was made and that's that. So it's in everything. So I don't understand why people get so hot under the collar, throw the bums out. You know, well, yeah, 
I mean, there should be a process of looking into, but you have to prove it and you have to find it first. And this case was she, she admitted something had happened. Of course, then she recanted. So who knows? That happens in everything, in the law process of a criminal too. I mean, if I, to say it's criminal, I don't think it's criminal. I think it has to do with honesty. It has to do with integrity and being fair to the skater, if that's what it's all about. If they lose, they lose according to opinion and knowledge. And that's a different ball game. But I, I think they're trying, the ISU is trying to do a process of making sure that, and this system does help a, a lot more than the other one did, because it was all about a judge in the other one, and it's not anymore. And that was hard for some people. That was hard for me at first. I said, I want my opinion known. What's this all about? Then I started thinking, I said, why is Joe Inman so important? He's just an evaluator. That's all I'm doing, based with my knowledge. That's my job. I'm not paid, but it's my job because I love what I do, so. Well, I think anything that's brand new is going to end up being a process of evolution. You throw things out, you keep things. ISU made 50 changes after the first year. So that's a major process of evolution right there, of change, and change is hard. And yeah, right now there's, you know, some people are complaining about some of the calls because they're not consistent, especially in step sequences. Well, there's a lot of and, and, uh, processes there that you're not for sure, um, they change. The skater doesn't always skate it the same. And of course it's gonna change. And they sometimes don't realize that they left something out. I can tell you sometimes when I used to perform in music, I couldn't tell you, yeah, all right, I can't remember that passage, how I played it. Because you get in this zone, and when you're done, you're thinking, oh, it's over. And you can't really say everything you did, even though you felt like you were in it, the music, you were just doing everything you have to know, but sometimes you get in a zone and it's hard to explain unless you're in the arts. Or even uh, in anything, I'm sure in your work, when you really feel like you've done something that's, ah, you know, it's, you, you get in a way and all of a sudden work, 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 work to get your achievement. And then it, all of a sudden it comes together. And you're like, oh my God, finally it's worked. And that's what I'm talking about. Well, I think in the seminars, and I'm sure everybody's <laughs> sick of our using her as Janet Lynn. She is truly, you go back and look at some of her programs, they stand alone today, add triples to them. A lot of people say, oh, she couldn't do though, all those transitions, all those movements linking. Yeah, she would have, trust me. Slavka, her coach, Kahoot, uh, the, Roger Glenn, who's a, a world judge and uh, international referee, etc., he said that when he took from her, uh, well, you know, he, she was his coach, she would not say how many times you fell or whatever. She would say, why did you leave out those two Mohawks in that Choctaw before that jump? That you know, that's unacceptable. Not that you fell on it, but what you left out to make that part come alive. And that was what she was very well known for in those days. And if you look at any of Janet Lynn, then you look at John Curry and just the sense of uh, that emotional, intellectual, and physical involvement in performance execution, that one criteria. And you watch him. The very end of the program, oh gosh, one of the Olympic programs, I can't remember which one it was, but he does a camel at the end. And he, I think he goes about nine times. But it's a slow speed, but it's in perfect position. The whole, it's just perfect. But it's just, just the music is dying away, and it's just, and he's just going with it, but staying in this perfect position. And things like that are what, if you're in, involved, you know how difficult that is to do, to keep that position, never waver. Those kind of ideas, and his sense of what he wanted to achieve. 
And there were a lot of other good skaters, but those are the two that stand out. And Gordy Gave and Greg Dell from Paris. Without question, their unison was just phenomenal. And their sense, that mastery of understanding each other and their mastery of the technique together. That unison, that last little bit that you need in a pair, which you don't see much of, where they know exactly where that person's gonna be. They anticipate. And that was the mastery of what they had. Well, you know, and everything, I think right now, the envelope's being pushed. Because they, the skaters believe in their strategy, and rightly so, and we have to, as judges, have to come up to the decision that if the positions aren't good, and if there's issues, within that spin, we should be in the minuses. Just because it's difficult doesn't mean we're rating quality. So, and that's hard for us because we've always done difficulty and quality. And so now they're saying the technical panel does the difficulty. Now we just do the quality. So you could do a simple step sequence and do it incredibly and get a plus two maybe, or a simple spin. And maybe that's been like a one position camel. So it's your strategy. If you can do it that beautifully and get a plus three, link right into that with some incredible movement and just fly into that camel and get that position and center it, do everything perfect that should be done to what the rules say, what a camel's supposed to look like. And you know, with the centering and their positions and the speed, et cetera, et cetera then probably could get a plus three and that would probably be as good as somebody's minus three on a spin for a level four. I'm not for sure what the points would come out to. I haven't spent time with that. I have enough to do with spending time. That's the coaches, that's their strategy. That's their ball game. It's a ball game now. It's really more sport and the art part will come around. I think that will get balanced out eventually. You know, it's like if you look at probably, if you go through the history of skating, there is, ISU has a, has a um, um, DVD out of the history of, and just take time and look at that and you'll see where the sport went in the 6-0 system and now where it's gone from now. Look at 1988, uh, uh, the Battle of the Bryants. One and a half times around the rink to do a triple axel. And you saw Ma Asato do less than a third of the rink and just steps up into it. A girl, a lady. So that just tells you it can be done. And everybody was saying for years, oh, you can't do these troubles, the women can't do them, da 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 Well, guess what? They push the envelope and it works. That's what sport's about. The art part, I said to you yesterday, the reason people love this sport is that it's sport and it has a tangible part of art. Now, how much and how the high degree of art we want is, is debatable and what standard, we can still have a very high standard and they'll reach it. Like I told you at our sectional championships a couple of weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, the novice ladies were doing pretty big tricks up through Lutz's, three or four of them, all the, the triples except for the axle. And they were linking, not just taking 10 hours to go down the ice to do something. They were linking their elements and their ideas, their movements. Yes, I did. Only two times. And it was uh, Michelle Kwan in Philadelphia before the Olympics. And that 6-0 was a moment in time. That's why I gave it. It had nothing to do with perfection. Because if I wanted to say you were supposed to have, well, see, it wasn't defined as much. It's going to be real hard for anybody ever to get a 10 in this system. Very, very difficult. I don't think you'll ever see it. I think it's going to be hard to get in the nines. If you want to get in the nines, in my opinion, from what we've done with working with the judges and trying to show them and collectively making a decision, Janet Lynn and John Curry are what nines could be. And Tor Valentin in dance. And Gordier Van Grinkoff. Not in every component, but in the majority of the components. Janet, to me, it could be in nines in every one of them. Linking steps. John Curry maybe not as much because he didn't link everything, but it was beautifully skated. So there's a balance of all kinds of ideas here. The way he just 
whatever. But my point is that everything will evolve in time. The art will get, it's as good as it was before. Tell me if you think it's worse. Is it worse? Is the understanding of the art part, what the skaters are doing, is it worse than it was two years ago? The last Olympics? I mean, when you look at how things were linked, were the jumps the most important thing? Is that, that's what the press goes on immediately because that's what they understand the most. They don't talk about choreography. They don't talk about presentation. You know, unless somebody knows it, maybe one of the skating people like Dick Button or something will talk about it. But when they write, rarely do they. They say they brought the audience to its feet. You know, it doesn't get into the nit grit of what it is. And that's what our job is to evaluate. And sometimes it may not go with the feeling of the audience. Look at the Lot Marshalls. I mean, that just goes to show the audience should not be voting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was clear in some of those decisions who should have, what judges would have done. It was clear to most people but not to the audience of his voting, because it was all about favoritism. Yes, they were a freedom of movement, of, of letting herself go. She projected, I felt what she was trying to give me. I felt her message. and. Uh, Claudia Rao, a great Cuban pianist, said, you have a message to give. And if you believe you've given that message, that's all that counts. The audience doesn't understand that that's their problem. You know, but you had a message as an artist. And probably what he meant was you are going to reach somebody. If some people don't understand it, that's their problem. Because that's their lack of education or sense of feeling or whatever. But that was his, his, you have a message to give and you want to get a message across. And her message with the Lyric Angelica long program was great. And the Rock Monmouth was totally different. So it was just really excellent skating. Pro it wasn't probably true perfection, but we changed the idea of not calling it perfection. It was like a moment in time, something that you remember. And I felt more than I've ever felt with any performance that I've judged. And that's why she got six O's in both performances from me. That's the reason. Uh, do you know, I really, that was, that was a press thing for me. Um, I thought the men's event was the premier event at that Olympics for me. And because those two people, those two guys, were very close in quality and different things outweighed something else. The women, were they were both good, very different, but it wasn't the same league to me of what the men were achieving. And that's where men, men's skating started showing more than just jumping around. That particular Olympics for me, besides John Curry, but I'm saying a majority of men were starting to show real choreography, real interpretation, you know, the ideas of what art is. The women were always doing it because they didn't do all the big jumps. If you remember, I think there weren't any, Katarina won with triple toes and triple sows. And I think Debbie had a triple loop, but probably, I don't think she, she achieved it. But then there was one person that was left out that would have been interesting, but she got ill. And everybody's forgetting I don't know what would have happened uh, with, um, oh, who got sick? Karen Kadavy. Karen Kadavy. She was a beautiful skater. Now, I don't know if she would have, who knows? I mean, look at this last Olympics. Did anybody think Sarah Hughes would win? Well, the great thing is the judges did it right. They did what was right. In the long program, I'm not saying winning the Olympics, but winning that long program. It was a 5-4 split. And it would be interesting in the new system if you had a more of a point evaluation to see what would have happened with that too. What made the difference for me was number one, the performance execution. The continuity of Sarah Hughes's program was just pushed all the way through a freedom of just a lawn of skating. 
because she didn't have anything to worry about. She, I don't think she was thinking, I'm going to, I hope to be on the podium in some way. You know, everybody would want to be on, but I think that's what she was hoping for. And I think you could see in the other two ladies that there was nerves and there was tension. And you could see it in the warm-up. One was a little slower. The other one was frenetic. You know, you could tell she was like wound up like a top that was ready to explode. And then you had another person there, a saucer coin, who in the short was really quite wonderful also. Then you had Fumi Suguri, who very interesting controversies in the judges meeting. I can talk about this stuff now because it's all over and done with. Uh, about her skating, because she has a very light, light quality, which a lot, if you look at all the Japanese girls, one of the, the best things about them is their skating skills. They develop really good skating skills, in my opinion. You know, and it started with her. You know, well, it, actually some of the other girls, but they weren't good jumpers in those days. And jumping was the name of the ball. I don't care what anybody says, I'll argue with them all days. If you were a jumper, you were gonna be up there in my opinion. And it, it goes, to, if you look at some of the people that were up there, it, it tells you. So all this thing that the, the art is going to go because of this new system, it's not happening in my belief and view. And I think if you ask a lot of people, if they're really honest with their evaluation process, they'll, they'll see that. Before in pairs, if you could not, and this is my opinion again, if you can do a triple toe, you're not going to be anywhere in the top. Now, because of the lifts being so important, the throws, everything having values, that one jump isn't so omnipotent anymore. Well, because I'm a musician, and I've heard Beethoven's Pathetic Sonata played about 5,000 times, I listen to it for what that performer gives me. My job is to evaluate what's there. Whether I like the music or not like the music, can they skate to this music? Do they use the nuances? Do they understand the character? Do they have effortless flow and glide to what the phrasing of the music is? Do they understand it in the performance? Can they intellectually tell me, give me a message and emotionally involved, not interpret, but emotionally show me what this is about. And my feeling is, um, I love great music. I don't care if it's cut well, I don't care. So the problem is, is how poorly some of the music is cut and the way they put, for me, different periods of music together. And I think you have to be very careful with movie music. This is just a musician talking. Because moving music is written for a scene. Most of the time the composer sits there, looks at the scene, decides what he's going to do. If a car's rumbling along, getting faster, the music's probably gonna get faster, accelerate. You know, if there's a big crash, something happens in the music. It's based according to what the scene is saying. Well, that's choreography. So the musician bases his music on the choreography of the scene. Okay, and that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. Great music is written because of concepts of ideas. Whether it's programmatic music like Don Juan, because Strauss, Don Juan, I'm Heldenleben, or any of those uh, programmatic which tells a story. But like all my professors in music said, music, great music stands alone. You don't need to know the story. Same thing with this dancing bit. You know, oh, I don't understand that story. I don't care what the story is. It's nice if they give you a story and you understand it, but is there a movement working with the phrasing of the music? Does it make sense the character of the music with the movement? That's what's important, not the story. I mean, the story is just a nicety, I think, maybe to help a skater get into it, you know. But in the long run, for me, if you want to look at it as art, it stands alone according to what the music is saying, the phrasing, form, structure. And that's my belief, I don't care what they do, as long as the music is cut well, and I look to see what their style, individuality, and personality is, and that's in performance execution.
Well, I know Lori personally, and she'll call me up and not tell me she's using a piece of music for a skater or something like that, because I don't want to know that. Uh, she'll ask my opinion on something, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I don't get paid for doing that. It's a free advice, and we give lots of free advice out, and some that they don't want, some that they do want. But I think they forget when we give it out and they like it, but they don't, you know, the vice versa bit. Um, I think she's ex exceptionally good because she believes in the integrity of music. For example, a recent skater, I listened to the music and I said, Laurie, you've repeated a phrase and it becomes asymmetrical. In this period of music, you can't, I, I think it doesn't make sense to be asymmetrical. You've got five phrases and it should be symmetrical, four phrases. So you can't repeat that phrase, it makes no sense to me. Now, that's me and maybe I live in another world, but I think you may not know it's happening, but if I pointed it out, you would see it and you would say, oh yeah, that's strange. You know, once it's pointed out, you start hearing the thing. And as a musician, you train yourself for years and years to hear, we're very much this. And then the great thing about skating is we should be this and that. In other words, some of the seminars that I do is how, the understanding the fundamentals of music and your watching skills to match your listening skills, or vice versa. And the listening is the hardest because it has to do with knowledge and understanding of music, and it can get complicated. For me, it's to believe in yourself, to know that you can be anything you want to be and be good. I don't care if it's a new system, an old system, but to take advice people get, like great teachers I've had said, you may not like everything I, I tell you, but you're going to figure out for yourself how to use it if you think it's viable for you. And you'll use it or discard it. And that's your decision of who you are as an artist. I don't want to spoon feed you. I don't think anybody should be spoon fed. You must do this. And the creativity of a skater is how they can take structure and create within limited bounds. I mean, that's just the way it goes. It's hard in a sport, which you have requirements, but how you, as a skater and an artist, take that structure and make it your own is what art is about. And what I would say to them is, look, take a time to look at what you've done in a program and evaluate it for yourself and be honest in your evaluation. Am I lacking transitions? Is this part boring? They're, they're, they're wonderful skaters. They can look at it and tell. Can they change it? I don't know. But, but you know, maybe the, the skaters of this day with the new system are finding it harder because they never had to learn to do transitions right into something, movements that link, not just set up, set up down the right, you know. And that's an issue, and that in the 6.0 system that you saw a lot of that. You're still seeing it here, you know, but it's gonna take time. It's a process of, of, of evolution, as you've said. You know, I'm not, you know, I asked Christine Brennan about this, and she said every sport except for NASCAR has lost viewership. Every sport, including football, basketball. Look at hockey. I mean, it's gonna take hockey a while to get back. And people aren't even going to hockey games now. I mean, just to start, because they, they were mad. Those fans were mad about all that. And it's the same thing. How do you do it? I think great skating will get them back. And I think they'll see that the system, I think this competition, when you look at it, it was, the. The decisions that were made were made by good panels of judges. If you look at the pair decisions here, the pairs were good. The pairs were very good. It was a very high level, especially in the short. And the women were quite good. Arena was wonderful, you know, but the differences are, you're getting, you base it on criteria, you look at that criteria, I can give you reasons why I gave the marks I gave. Based upon a criteria, not like, well, I really like her speed, she's real fast. Well, that's one aspect that's called rhythmic 
knee action, precision of foot placement, and power and acceleration, you know, and skating skills. But there's other stuff in the skating still too. And then you get to carriage. So you have all these little things and all these components that you get to finally have something to say, ah, oh, now I can give a mark based on something. And it's just gonna take time. I think it's going to be interesting. I hope that the technical things get balanced out. You don't see five, five Billmans and in, in, in a program. And there will be some issues with that, how the technical committees decide. But you have to have requirements. You have to have rules. It's a fact of life. It's sport first. But the great thing, like I said, is art too. Now, how do you balance all this out? Now, the great thing about this system to me is the strategy. And the skaters are thinking they get more points by getting the hardest levels instead of doing a low level spin. For example, uh, this uh, competition is over Let Me Out. His last program, his last spin, combination spin, which we all picked today as probably the most outstanding spin in the competition of the men and the free skating was only a level one. But we were discussing if it could have been a plus three. Most of us gave plus ones and plus twos. I gave plus two on this, and several of us gave plus twos. And the only thing that kept it from getting to the plus three was the slight travel after he did his inside edge, you know, or right before he did. I can't remember which one, but that little bit, the three is the wild factor. The factor that everything is exactly on, and you're like, whoa, that was something. And the, the, those little things, it wasn't a big error because he didn't travel that much. You give them the hips to travel within a circle. You've got to give that when they change. I mean, you can't just step on that, that little one inch. I mean, if you think, you've got to think the hips. You know, how much hips do you have here that you're within a, a change or whatever you're doing when you, when you do your changes? And so the point about that was, is judges will eventually open it up more but it's still based upon phases you can't miss a phase and get a plus two you have to do all phases good to get a plus two to get a plus three it's that extra is there's not you can't criticize anything it's all wow 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 and same thing in the components components of course are going to have a little more subjectivity and that's okay we have cultural differences in this world and that's okay. And the great thing is you go on the internet and you, and you read in like Figure Skating Universe, which we all are, do at times, it's a fact of life. Those people don't agree either. And I don't know if they see they don't agree, but they argue unbelievably about this or that, and they have favoritism too. And I mean, to criticize, I a lot of criticism of judges, and I just love to write, and I have written sometimes. I just find it fascinating that they speak of their favorites in such waxing eloquence about why, and then criticize judges for their, their marks sometimes. But it's based upon what they think, you know, and that's okay. They're allowed to. I think that's what makes the sport great. People like it. They have opinions. Well, we have opinions that are pretty developed. I mean, according to criteria you have to study. And I'm not saying there, there's some very knowledgeable people on that, on that site, which I'm really surprised about, but very, very knowledgeable. And they've actually been pretty kind to me, except one time. So, you know, with, with something that I posted. I usually try to stay off and not get involved, but I really tried to help explain the system because there was a lot of misconcepts. And a lot of people don't care for the system. I know Miss B and Ketty doesn't care for it. Uh, I've never talked to her directly of why, because I have a lot of respect for her. She brought the sport to another level. Sally Stafford worked to bring the presentation more. So you have to give people credit where credit is due. They, they're, what their opinions are now and what, what, how they're taking it in the genre they're taking into, that's their decision and their personal beliefs and that's fine. But my belief is, I believe, I'm not gonna be intimidated by anybody, and I'm going to give my belief of why I like something, and I try to give the facts why. 
And I think I've done that here today.